Hello, everyone. My name is Todd Westhauser, and this is Kieran Vermeeri, and we are hardware engineers at Meta. Um, today, we'll be talking to you about Yosemite V3, which is our next generation of modular servers. Um, it's a pretty substantial upgrade from our previous generation in modularity and scalability, and um, we we're really excited to show it off to everyone here. So um, a few things we're gonna go over are the improvements for this generation. Um, what we currently have deployed and submitted to OCP in this platform, as well as some things coming down the pipe um, based on this modular platform, which allows us to do a few more things in our previous generations. So a quick overview. Um, there is a mechanical mock-up of it down in the bottom there. Um, the main components of this are the actual server blade. This is a one socket server, um, which is that bottom piece which is pulled the furthest out. Um, these can be arranged in a 1U form factor. Um, by height, this is a third um, OU wide, as you can see, since there's three sleds. And um, you can put up to four of these blades in a single sled, um, as demonstrated in that. Um, the, the next logical unit is the sled, which is the larger box, which is pulled out a little bit further. Um, the three of these, like I mentioned, will fit into that chassis. And then, um, as you can see on the right, there's a mock-up of a rack configuration. Um, it has some room at the top for a top-of-rack switch, uh, and we can have up to eight of these chassis in a single rack um, based on the open rack V2 form factor. So um, basically, this allows for, for up to uh, 96 of these if we were to fully populate um, each blade in the individual sleds and racks. So some of the major improvements from the previous generation, um, on the left is YV3, on the right is Yosemite V2, which is our previous generation. Um, the biggest improvement we have is every single blade in the system is front serviceable. Um, this is completely independent from each other, um, which is different from Yosemite V2. That was also individually serviceable, but you'd have to pull the whole sled out and it had thermal issues where you'd have to turn up the fan since it's no longer in a nice contained environment. Um, additionally, um, a real advantage is the blades are now the full length of the chassis. So what that means is um, the, the one socket server will not actually take up a full blade length, which allows some room for expansion in the same form factor. Um, previously in the Yosemite V2, we'd have to actually swap out one of the blade slots if we were going to put any sort of expansion or, or memory or any type of additional compute configuration in there. Here you can put that in a single blade um, or there's options to combine multiple blades and, and take the 2OU form factor instead of the single U, um, which adds for a lot more flexibility than we previously had. Um, and like I mentioned, um, we, there actually is a reduction from 16 blades in a sled to 12. Um, but it actually provides a lot of thermal improvements since we're able, there's no preheating, since they're not aligned with each other um, with single blades in the same fan path. And additionally, um, we can add those expansion options without replacing individual blades. So here's a, a quick blow up of all of the different configurations we have, of which there are quite a few. Um, so as we go from the cubby to the sled, um, I've mentioned there's the Delta Lake board, which is our base one socket server. This is the most basic aspect and will be involved in every single of the, single of the additional expansion options. And then, um, like I mentioned, the, there's different form factors for these that will all fit within the sled based on what expansion we're using. So um, the options here are Delta Lake plus Vernal Falls, which is also in 1OU and allows for some memory expansion. There's also Sierra Point which is another memory expansion option, um, but that one comes in a 2OU form factor. Additionally, there's um, Discovery Point, which allows for some PCIe expansion, um, and Glacier Point V3, which is um, the next generation of Glacier Point V2, which is a YV2-based um, OCP contribution. Um, and finally, there's a 4OU option, which is that Kings Canyon, but we'll go into more detail on all of these in a little bit. So here's a little bit more detail on the specific sled um, makeup that we have in our Yosemite V3 configuration. So th the real advantage of this is we get to leverage a lot of the same hardware even when we're swapping out different pieces. So um, the Medusa board takes power from the back of the chassis that comes off of the rack um, power bars. 
and that will distribute to each of the sleds through these Medusa cables, which are not pictured. Um, from there, there's a vertical power distribution board, which will give power to each of the blade slots as well as the baseboard. We have a baseboard, which can be common for any of our configurations, um, which allows us to leverage that nicely. And then um, in the bottom right, you can see there's those front I.O. boards, which allow us to get access to LEDs, um, which are um, compliant with the OCP indicator spec, as well as um, push buttons if we need to perform any manual power cycling, um, although that's not the ideal operation. Uh, primarily, we like to do that remotely. Um, and then currently we're implementing Delta Lake one socket servers. Um, that server card is a specification which is, has been accepted by OCP and other server cards could fit in that same form factor and allow for the system to work completely the same um, with maybe performance improvements. Um, and lastly, there is a multi-host NIC for this configuration where we have um, the four blade one socket servers and that is using the OCP NIC 3.0 form factor. Um, here is an image of the physical hardware we have. Um, this is it, it coming together in the sled um, with a Delta Lake in that bottom configuration. Um, there, there's little extra room at the front, so you can't actually add the expansion in there. Um, and um, that baseboard allows for these cables to be serviceable um, in the sled with that top mechanical sheet pulled off. So now I'm gonna pass it to Kieran to talk about some of our future contributions uh, for Yosemite B3. Thanks, Clark. Can, can everybody hear me? All right, mm -hmm. okay, um, thanks for joining. Uh, so what Todd presented uh, shows the base building block, the Delta Lake server on the Yosemite platform. So the way we look at it for the metadata center is uh, each of these blocks is like a Lego. The base uh, Delta Lake is the primary Lego block. And if you want to morph it for other use cases, we add different Lego blocks on top to make it either a storage server, or if you want an accelerator server, or if you want other application with the uh, PCIe chem add-in cards. So we will go through each of those uh, morphed application use cases. Uh, what is already ac accepted at the OCP is the, the base Delta Lake server and the Yosemite V3 platform. The ones we present next are things still in the work. Yeah, so the ones we're going to go through are the, the, one, the single host NIC for high bandwidth use cases, and then the accelerator cards, and also the chem adapter cards. So this is the one where uh, we take the server and use the front expansion, which is the PCIe, 16 PCIe lanes, to add uh, up to four E1.S drives. So this provides a, a very high density flash server for use cases, it could be anything from like search or database. So the sled still has four servers. This is the front view of that. The drives are serviceable from the front and the expansion card is called Vernal Falls. Now, from here you can still see there are four servers, but if you want to add more uh, density of flash, what we do is we take out two servers and then use the 2U space that you can see. If we take out two servers, that the freed up space is used to add more flash modules. So in this case, it's a disaggregated flash using uh, six E1.S uh, uh, flash drives on a board called Sierra Point. So in the disaggregated flash, there is also a high bandwidth requirement because all the other servers are trying to use this flash. So the network requirements are higher. So we, what we do is we remove the shared NIC between the servers and then move the NIC to the individual server to provide a dedicated single host NIC. And that's enabled by a NIC expansion card that connects to the server directly. So the one here on the right, the NIC expansion and the single host NIC go directly under the, the E1.S drives. You can see the NIC card here. And this is the front view of that. The six drives on the 2U on the two space and the NIC dedicated NIC connected to the server. On the left is the same rendering, the NIC expansion and the NIC, then the this connectors for this uh, six E1.S drives. If you want to do an accelerator on top of the server, connected to the server, 
then we can use the Glacier Point V3, which enables uh, up to six dual M.2 accelerators or 12 single M.2 accelerators, along with two E1.S drives. And the, all of the, that is enabled, uh, is connected to the server through a PCIe switch. And that connects to the server through the, again, the 2U space is used by GPV3 or the Glacier Point V3, and the 24 lanes of the PCI, PCIe uh, connected to the server are used to link to the Glacier Point V3. And again, what we show here is, uh, depending on the accelerator need for network bandwidth, we can have a single host NIC connected directly to the server, or if the accelerators are not that network bandwidth in intensive, they can go for a shared NIC, reducing the cost of operation. And let's say the use case is such that we want to add more accelerators. This shows a use case where we have two Glacier Point V3 cards providing up to 12 dual M.2 accelerators per server that is enabled by using another PCI switch. That's why we show SMTV3 plus a switch and a Glacier Point V3. Now, there are several use cases where we want to use in the standard industry chem form factor cards connected to the server. So, and the use cases could be several uh, from things like a host bus adapter or a simple USB expansion for other application or using uh, the server as a head node. For all of that, uh, we provide a, a, a riser card called Discovery Point that is connected to the riser connectors on the server. And from there, it provides a chem connector and the front view shows the two PCIe cards, the ports out of the cards in the front. Recapping, so there's several configurations that can be built on top of the Yosemite V3 base platform. The simple 1OU high density version is the, just the Delta Lake servers or having 1L falls with 4E1.S. Now going to the 2U expansion, we enables more uh, higher, um, more modules to be connected, either through Sierra Point uh, or Discovery Point chem adapter or the Glacier Point V3. And then the 4U config is the one where we want to use two Glacier Point V3 cards for a lot of accelerators. So in summary, Yosemite V3 is a versatile platform that enables uh, Meta to leverage one platform for several use cases in the data center, enabling better serviceability, easier management, a huge leverage of the design, and uh, the cost is reduced quite a bit by sharing the BMC between the four servers and the NIC as well between the four servers. And then by going with the French serviceability, we are able to get better thermal efficiency, improved airflow. So the specifications for the base Yosemite V3 platform are available at the OCP website, along with the Delta Lake server. And then there's more information at the, it's still FB blog, but it will be soon meta blog. Uh, we also have the hardware, uh, all configurations are, uh, are shown, um, both at the meta booth and also right behind meta booth is the Weavin booth, our ODM partner. So we can go, it's hands on, you can, pull it out and see how it looks and feels. And uh, soon we will, uh, will also be able to provide it for purchase for any of your use cases. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank I'm you.